please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's agenda? Tom, second. Megan, any discussion or questions? All in favor? 6-0. Okay, Mr. Poole, superintendent's report. Uh, thank you and good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to start off with um, the tragedy yesterday was awful uh, in Nashville, and I know all of us are saddened and sickened to our hearts by it, but I also want to make, I, I also want to say that uh, we remain vigilant. Uh, we have a strong security system here in Shore and Raining River. Um, and we remain vigilant um, to keep our schools safe and secure. Uh, there is a public presentation on the webpage from September if anybody's interested in the public to view our security protocols. Or I would encourage any families to give me a call. I'm happy to speak with them. All right. So a little good news over at the, uh, at the high school. Uh, congratulations to the high school and Prodel Middle School students who performed this past Friday night at the Trium Music Honor Society's annual Sweets and Treats event. Thank you to Wham, the Wildcats Helping Art and Music Brewster Club for supporting this amazing event. Congratulations to our SAD Club uh, student members, uh, Sydney Albert, uh, Sophia Costello, Nicholas Friedlander, uh, Lila Grosso, Nadia Grosso, and Kyle Schiff, whose public service announcement video, Driving Skills 101, was selected as a top 10 finalist, earning them a $250 prize from the National Road Safety Foundation. Additionally, at the high school, Shoreham Rating River was really well represented at DECA's 63rd annual New York State Career Conference recently held in Rochester. 28 students competed in events uh, related to business, finance, and marketing, entrepreneurship. Students took exams, gave presentations. Uh, congratulations to all the students, but six students, uh, Eamon Ali, Ryan Cummings, Olivia Diamond, uh, Jacob Formasano, Liam McGuire, and Christopher Vignola were, were recognized in the DECA National Honor Society and 12 students received medals for placing top 10 in one or more of their events. With three students placing top 10 overall, national event winners included Ayman Ali and Sean Daney who placed second in the state, second in all of New York State for, fin for the financial services team decision making, and Jacob Formasano, Christopher Vignola and Brian Vogel, who qualified as Leadership Academy candidates, five students are moving on to the uh, International Career Development uh, Conference in Orlando, Florida. It's on the agenda tonight to approve their trip to Orlando, so congratulations to our Decker team. I feel like it was a record number of students uh, with really great success uh, this year in Decker, which is a great program. Parents, you're listening. You're looking for an extracurricular club at the high school for students. Have them join Decker. Great club for uh, anybody interested in business and, and or otherwise. Uh, over to sports at the high school, congratulations to Ben, I apologize Ben if I have your last name wrong, Ben Vizemierski, who was a member of the Section 11 Intersectional Distance Medley Relay Team who won a state title at the NISPA Championship. So he was part of a Section 11 team that won a state championship, so congratulations to him. Congratulations to Abigail Barron, Alec Gregoric, Liam Gregoric, Ryan Herr, Liam Kirschus, and Grace Ann Leonard for being named to Newsday's Top 100 Boys and Girls Lacrosse Players. Congratulations to Olivia Pesso for being named to the all Long Island cross country team. And recently in the Suffolk Police Athletic League, second annual exceptional senior girls basketball challenge championship, our very own Sophie Costello, who's an amazing basketball player, was named most valuable player uh, at, that, at that event. So congratulations to our athletic uh, accomplishments uh, students. Over at the middle school, last week, the middle school students welcomed a librarian and author, Mr. John Shu. He had a lot of energy, got students excited about talking about books that they love and the books that they will love. And this is pretty awesome. Uh, 15 of Mr. Driscoll's top technology students competed in the Brookhaven National Lab Mag Magnetic Levitation Contest last week. And congratulations to Shoreham Rating River eighth grader Ryan Barton, who won first place overall in that maglev competition. So great work uh, by him. Uh, over at Wading River, uh, if you had a chance to see the play Tut Tut, what a wonderful performance about a, a prince and pauper tale in ancient Egypt. 
sets, designs, songs, the music production. It's just always amazing what fifth graders, oh, I'm not, I shouldn't be amazed anymore. The performance was, was really, really great. Look forward to it every year. And just recently uh, this week, all students in grades three and four attended a special performance of Peter and the Wolf at the Stoller Center at Stony Brook. Uh, and those tickets were funded uh, through philanthropy and special thanks to a uh, Shoreham Reading Group parent and arts advocate Paul Newman, Newland for his work behind the scenes on securing the funding to help make this uh, great trip possible for our third and fourth graders. Over at, at Miller Avenue, all of our second grade students will be taking a step back in time this week when they visit for a field trip to Long Island Museum's one-room schoolhouse. Students get to dress for the occasion and have a chance to see what it's like to attend school uh, in the 19th century. Uh, we have some amazing staff here at Shoreham Reading River. I just want to mention uh, three of our English teachers over at the high school who were selected to present at a, the Long Island Language Arts Council, which was on March 24th. Uh, teachers Vincent Ball and Brenna Gilroy co-presented on the topic of synthesizing composition, literature, and lyric, which provided resources and strategies on how to enhance instruction, English instruction with music. And uh, Sarah Tren presented the workshop, How Supplementary, Supplementary Media Enhances Teaching, which focuses on using professional learning communities and social media platforms to aid teachers in connecting and creating new and interesting lessons and activities for, uh, for students. And uh, briefly, on the agenda tonight, I'm very, uh, very excited to, to see on the agenda the awarding of the projects for the art renovation and the renovation of the Health and Fitness Center. That work should be completed over the summer and we start school next September. There should be a, a state-of-the-art art, art space for our students uh, in the art program at the high school as well as a, a brand new health and fitness center for all of our students at the high school to enjoy as well as our athletic team. So very exciting work to see that come to uh, fruition. I thank the community for the support of that proposition uh, last year to make this work happen and uh, be a great, great impact for our students in the athletics and in the arts uh, for next year. Tonight we have our third in a series of budget presentations uh, led by Mr. Arcuri on the 2023-24 uh, budget, uh, budget. And just a few announcements. Uh, please mark your calendars. April 19th, uh, there's a parent workshop presented by the Suffolk County Department of Health at 6.30 here at the high school on the dangers of vaping and uh, what parents don't know and need to know about uh, edible THC. I know it's scary, the packaging and that, so it should be a great workshop and informative for families. Um, we are forming a 50th anniversary celebration uh, committee. We have some committee members on that already. It, believe it or not, it is we are approaching the 50th anniversary of the formation of the Shoreham Reading River Central School District. And if anybody's interested in joining that committee, please reach out to my office. We have, we have uh, room for more, more people, lots of planning, and uh, help us with the festivities. Uh, just an update on the North Shore Youth Council uh, facility here on campus, the portable, the portable's here. Uh, they are finishing up some final touches. I believe the skirting around the portable is coming this week, finishing up some of the interior work. But I did speak with uh, Director Robert Woods today. They were hoping to begin services on April 3rd um, up here at the high school. So that is, that is good news. Um, this week, Thursday and Friday at the middle school, uh, another wonderful theater performance. Uh, the middle school students will be performing Into the Woods Junior. Anybody interested in tickets, they can be found. There's a link on our webpage for that. And then um, I mentioned this earlier, we are making progress on finalizing a school climate survey for students in grades 7 through 12. I know Mr. Meinster will be sending out some information over the next couple of weeks uh, to families and staff and students um, about what the survey is and, uh, and to include a copy of, of the survey uh, prior to the school district um, having that. And that will help us inform uh, decisions for the whole child as we move into the future. And that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Poole. Is there, just a quick question on the, the vaping uh, workshop. Is there any way we can live stream that or at least videotape it to post? That is a good question. Let, let me, let me I, I, I can't imagine that the Department of Health is going to mind if we, if we live stream that. So that, that's a really good question. Let me see if that's possible. Okay. Next up, we'll go to reports and reviews right into the uh, budget presentation. Mr. Arcuri.
Good evening. Um, as uh, Mr. Poole stated earlier, tonight is our third budget presentation on the 2023-2024 budget. Um, hopefully by the end of this week, the um, uh, governor will uh, finalize the uh, uh, state budget to give us the last missing piece, which is what, what are our final state aid numbers? How far will they deviate from the executive run? <clears throat> but this evening we're going to be Back to discussing what's covered within the federal grant funds for 2023-2024. Um, during the school day programs, full-time elementary math academic interventionist, a .5 elementary reading teacher, district-wide psychologist, high school mentor positions. Again, the universal pre-K program is uh, funded by the state grant, as well as the additional funding comes from the um, remaining ESSA grant funds. Uh, professional development. Um, there is still some funding in order to finish the outdoor learning spaces, both at the um, two ele elementary schools. Work is currently under underway on uh, finalizing items with that. The uh, two principals and uh, Mr. Rossini met with the the landscape architect from uh, BBS last week in in order to finalize a couple of items in order to finish outfitting those um, uh, spaces. When I say finish, finish with the available funding. We will always continually build on these areas, but with the remaining funds that allowed us to purchase these outdoor learning centers, we are going to use the remaining funds to just put some finishing touches on it, again, with these grant fund dollars. As for extracurricular programs, English as a new language in Richmond and support opportunities, as well as the Summerize Theater Program. So these funds are finished at the end of 2023-24 school year. So we're going to utilize these funds, bring, bring in these uh, programs, and it will not come at any cost to the taxpayer. 23-24 budget, over, budget overview. Very, very happy to point out there the only day where there was a snow on the ground the um, uh, Miller Avenue students were outside using the uh, new outdoor learning, learning space. So I was happy to see a great picture. The kids are in it. Kids were in, enjoying the space on, on that day. And um, teachers are continually using it as um, uh, weather allows. The 23-24 budget maintains all programs that are in the 22-23 program, maintains current class size, lowers the use of district reserves, includes enhancements, reflects economies and efficiencies, supports maintenance of facilities, and provides funding to support improvements related to safety and security of both facilities and the network infrastructure. Program facility enhancements, um, unified bowling athletics program, full cheer program, part of the athletics program, new electives, American Sign Language 4, Peer Mentoring Spanish, Community Relations, AP Pre-Calculus. As for maintenance projects, funding has been included to do new tile around the middle school library, Wading River Library Makerspace, replace security cameras and card access control readers, and replace water fountains with bottle filling stations. It also provides funding for middle school coral risers, high school physical health and wellness program, high school art program, security vehicle, Miller Avenue, all-purpose room, replacement lunch tables, lacrosse time, time clocks. That particular list has, has been what I've been sharing at the past two budget development meetings. As Mr. Poole mentioned earlier on this evening's agenda, we are awarding the capital project awards related to the renovation of the two art spaces as well as the physical health and wellness wellness center once we receive those final bid numbers we were able to take some of the equipment dollars that were earmarked in the 23 24 draft budget redirect them to have the expense come from voter approved funds which allowed us to free up some equipment dollars in the 23 24 budget so with those freed up equipment dollars, we were able to add gymnasium wall pad replacement at Miller Avenue School, 
library casework and fixtures at the Wading River Building, and innovative smart furniture for both the high school and, and middle school. Smart furniture is included with equipment for an to outfit an instructional space. Anything that the students are either sitting in, engaging with, utilizing, making access with. So we were able to use voter approved funds now that we were able to have final numbers for that capital project. So being able to free up that money allowed us to add things back into the 23-24 equipment budget that we did not include in our first two um, presentations. Any questions with that particular change? Also, I just want to point out the picture here is of the science fair winners of the um, Awaiting River Science Fair. And it's a beautiful tile mural. The, the mural at the Waiting River Building really makes a great backdrop for many of the um, uh, pictures out of that building. I think it came out great. Tax levy history for the past six years. As it shows you there, we've been under the cap by $304,820. And from 2017-18 to 2022-23, the tax levy grew by about 1.24%. About six hundred thirty-six thousand thousand dollars. Again, very very important to point out. New York State Comptroller says the consumer price index is running about eight percent, and our average tax levy increase over the past six years is one point two four percent. So we are well below the allowable. We are well below the consumer price inflationary figure, even with this year's tax levy, which is under two under two two. 2%, but looking at the last six years, we are significantly below what the average <coughs> consumer price index value has, has been. Budget history the last six years, again, average increase over six years, 2.25%. So we continue to strive to find economies and efficiencies, continue to try to always deliver improved program without any increase to the uh, tax base. Proposition 1, 23-24 budget, looking at a 2.16% increase from 2022-23, or $1,792,253. On February 28th, we discussed employees' salaries and benefits, which was approximately 72% of the budget. On March 14th, we discussed transportation, debt and transfers, district-wide expenses, and special education. What I just mentioned to you before about the change in taking out equipment that was related to the art room and health and wellness center renovation and returning it to classroom instructional type equipment funding required us to revise the district-wide expense category. So the total budget did not change. The equipment funding between categories changed. Equipment funding to outfit the high school art rooms and auxiliary gym planned for this upcoming summer, which was budgeted in the athletics and curriculum and staff development categories, has been removed. And the equipment budgeted in the curriculum and staff development category has been switched to district-wide expenses. So now, classroom instructional equipment, anything related directly to students, is in the category of district-wide expenses if it's not part of the athletic athletic program or part of a teacher in a teacher instructional space any questions on the change in why the why the categories changed okay again those are the four category the three categories that were impacted by that change so tonight we're going to review the the remaining 7.21 percent of the um, expenditure budget we're going to cover facilities, technology, athletics, curriculum and staff development, community programs, health services, and personnel. Facilities, budgeted amounts for utilities have been increased to align with projections, an increase of approximately 232,000. It's an 18.68% increase between 22 and 23 in budget for, for utilities. Budget amounts for maintenance contracts have been adjusted based on projected rate increases. 
Funding has been included to allow for the purchase of vacuums, grounds equipment, landscape trailer, tables and chairs, industrial floor equipment, and either a one new security vehicle or multiple used security vehicles, depending upon how our um, uh, security fleet is at the, end of, at the end of this school year. We will either decide to purchase one new vehicle or take two out of service and then again purchase two, two used vehicles. One time maintenance project budget has been increased by $10,000 for a total of $455,000. I think it's important to mention that the 23 24 budget continues to provide funding to maintain the district facilities. As I mentioned earlier, planned maintenance projects include replacement of wall mounted folding tables in the AP room at Miller Avenue, floor tile in a hallway around the middle school library, security cameras and card access control readers and the replacement of bottle filling stations in place of water fountains. Buildings and grounds improvements are irrigation repairs, tree pruning, and asphalt repairs in uh, certain locations. Increase of $326,588. Majority of that is, as I mentioned earlier, related to utilities. It's an 11.11% increase. And the facilities category takes up 3.85% of the total budget. Technology budget, their proposed budget maintains all programs and services in the 22-23 budget. Contractual increases for maintenance and support for network, firewall, website, database services, user licenses, Go Guardian, including Beacon. We have added another lease payment related to another round of purchase of, of Chromebooks reduction in contracted services for IT support. We are taking one position that was outsourced and bring it in and bring it to an in-house position. Uh, re replacement of um, end of year life equipment. And there was a reduction in contingent funding related to contractual services. So between Mr. Meinster and Mr. Esposito, they did a very thorough detailed job um, with the technology budget by basically bringing it down to zero and building it up from a zero based budget in order to make sure there was no over no overlap between budget codes buildings um, and to align the technology budget exactly to what our program is so I think they they did a phenomenal job and it does it does show it there's a little less than a $6,000 increase year over year, a 0.33% increase. And it's the technology budget makes up 2.14%. Any type of insurance related to cybersecurity does not live in the technology budget. All insurance lives within the district wide expense category. Just a quick question on technology. Sure. The uh, lease payments related to the replacement Chromebooks, is that? Is that annual? Is that time out? Is that we annual? We have a five-year lease, okay. four-year lease, uh, four-year. It's a four-year lease payment, and we are cycling them through. So each 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 lease equates for between 400 to 700 Chromebooks, and in order to continue to replenish them as they age out, even though a lap, even though a Chromebook might actually function, the actual software on it. Has, a, has an expiration date attached, attached to it. Okay. So we continue to cycle them, th cycle them through, and the best way is to do it through a BOCES, a BOCES lease project. Okay, I also know there was some, some loose conversations about potentially uh, eliminating them at, the, at Miller Avenue. Mm -hmm. Would that then affect this line item? Not for this, per not for this particular year, but it could actually impact a lease that we already have in there for two years so that we, we would end up not, not renewing our first lease. Okay. Does that make staggered, sense? Right? Staggered, right? Yes, staggered. correct. Okay. And, what, and what percentage did our instructional technology, uh, our technology insurance go up? Was it the, cyber, the cyber insurance, when I presented it last, last meeting, we are looking at at least a 50 to 80% increase in our cyber insurance rate. That's assuming that, we're our, that we are able to get coverage. And we would be doing nothing wrong if we're not able to get coverage because the market is just so tight. The technology team has us 
ahead of schedule on the minimal requirements. And it's just the market for cyber insurance is extremely, extremely tight. And we will do our best to continue to get coverage. We are positioned, Mr. Esposito and his team has kept us in a great spot. But it's whether or not there's a firm that wants to take on that liability risk. And then what's the solution then? Solution, we just stay with our liability insurance for cyber that's covered by our general liability carrier. Um, we don't have an additional insurance policy. Our general liability carrier provides some coverage, but not as extensive as we would want. Okay, and I'm just curious, what's the beacon portion of GoGuardian? I'm gonna slide over to Mr. Meister for a little bit of help with that. Yeah, so, the, so the beacon is, is what we use to be able to identify students um, and any user on any district issued device that um, you know, it triggers warnings for us and notices for us when students or staff um, are on sites that could potentially be flagged for uh, harm for either the student themselves uh, or, or others. Any other questions on the technology? Moving on to the athletics cat category. Program main maintains all teams from 22, 23. High school, there are 45 teams. That is including the new unified bowling and the full cheer that are gonna be added for 23, 24. Middle school has 24 teams. We had 369 scholar athletes for 22, 23. <laughs> Funding has been included to purchase 40 new lacrosse helmets, 20 for the middle school and 20 for the high school. The equipment budget has been increased to allow for the purchase of new high school competition wrestling mat. Um, something I neglected to put on the, put on the um, uh, slide was we have, Mr. Poole is going to help me with it because I did forget, the NISFA. Well, along with the 369 scholar athletes, we are in a consecutive years of being a uh, New York State Athletic Association School of Distinction for um, athletics uh, in re relationship to scholar athletes. So it's a pretty great achievement for our students, but really a great um, a great support for the athletic program, not only um, impacting kids physically but academically as well. Yes, I had planned to add that bulletin. I didn't do it. I apologize for that. Kids work very, very hard for it, and I, uh, I will definitely have it added before it's posted to the uh, website tomorrow. Recurring purchases, football helmets, uniforms, athletic supplies and materials, equipment purchases, Section 11 officials and administration fees, and other related expenses necessary to operate the athletic program. Um, we also, funding is included for the reconditioning and disinfecting of all district-owned equipment. The uh, athletic budget is increasing by 80, a little bit more than $80,000, and it's 0.41% of the total budget. Just a quick question with helmets, helmets in general. Um, so the recurring purchase is for football helmets. Um, I see funding is only for a portion of the new lacrosse helmets. Um, there's no mention about softball or baseball helmets. Are those provided by the individuals, or the, do, the, do the school provide baseball and softball helmets. I know that we do provide some helmets, but if it's okay, I'm just gonna ask Mr. Passamonte for a little bit of support. Please, that would be great. Since I don't know the answer to that question. <laughs> the, uh, as far as baseball, um, we purchase baseball helmets. Um, the girls have used their own, and it's not that we don't purchase them, it's just they prefer with their long hair and whatnot, their certain helmet, so they've always used their own helmets. They're all Noxy approved, they're all safe approved but that's that's what we've done so how often do we do we change those out as far as i'm just wondering if, if the reincurring purchase should be helmets in general and it seems like it's just focusing on football at the moment maybe it's just maybe it's yeah just no we buy baseball we buy baseball helmets every year okay uh we buy those every year and again with softball most of those girls play travel and they just prefer their own. I mean, I have helmets in stock. I gave them some this year. So I always have um, helmets if a student may not have one. How do we, how do we certify? I know, that, I know there was an issue years ago when we bought new lacrosse helmets mm -hmm. that we weren't allowing the kids to use their, use their travel helmets. Mm -hmm. Do we have that same issue with softball or? 
No, no, because they're, um, they're, as long as they're Noxy certified, it's different than a lacrosse or a football helmet because it's not constant contact, okay. especially with football. That's really constant contact on every play. Um, so, no, they're not recertified like uh, a football or lacrosse helmet is. Neither are baseball. They're, they're, you're better off just buying new because I checked in with our Riddell rep about recertifying them and sending them out to get them cleaned with our baseball helmets. He said you're better off for the cost just buying new when you do that. So, so what is the plan moving forward for for the remaining lacrosse helmets that weren't being replaced? Instead of doing the, the full lot of them, what is is it next, next three years they'll all be new, or is every year we'll get a certain amount? No, I'd, we'll just budget every year to get a certain amount where we are. They, they're they typically, like, as long as they're recertified, they're good for 10 years like a football helmet would be. Okay. So they're, And same thing with the football helmets. We don't buy all new every year. I usually – about 20 a year. So this is now the first time we're replacing? Yes, because I think it was 16 or 17 when we got those okay. the initial ones we're currently using right now. They're still not at their 10-year mark. Okay. We still have time, but I'm starting to plan ahead so that you put that in and just have them renewed every year. And you also have some spare in case, I mean, they get face masks, yeah. get, you know, bent, what get cracks in them. Because they, they have the option to wear a helmet, right? Yeah, we have them. Actually, uh, we went through that about four years ago. We bought, I have four cases upstairs. <laughs> so we have those, and they're ready to go if a, if a female uh, lacrosse player chooses to wear them. Okay. So, yeah. Moving on to the curriculum and staff development category. Uh, this category has seen a decrease, again, this is one of the areas Mr. Um, um, Meinster went down to a zero-based budget, started from nothing, built it all the way back up. This budget category was also impacted by realigning the equipment purchases, directing them back to district-wide expense category. If any equipment purchase was related to student area, student um, type equipment, it's all been categorized and realigned back to its proper budget code. Um, Ongoing professional development, required annual training, trainings, conferences, workshops, professional subscriptions and memberships, curriculum development, writers and consultants, curriculum and student program support such as Navion's ebook, Access and Easy Tech, supplies and materials to support curriculum development and implementation, and as I mentioned, reduction related to equipment budgets realigned to more appropriate budget codes which are in a different category. The curriculum and staff development makes up 0.38% of the total budget. Community programs. Community programs is a zero based, meaning there's a revenue offset for it. So whatever we budget in community programs, we have a revenue offset because community programs runs based on a registrant cost. So whatever costs we incur, we pass on to the uh, people utilizing it, taking advantage of the um, uh, program. It is available for pre-K through grade 12 students. 20 programs are offered. <coughs> Elementary students, 22, 23 so far is 861 registrants to date. Secondary students, 275 registrants to date. Adult education programs, seven programs are offered. 239 registrants to date. The summer round out for 22, 23 school year, so 174 participants. And the Music Institute had 48 registrants. Budget amounts, you'll see an increase this year. We, are, we have gone out to RFP for driver's ed services. Mm -hmm. We do anticipate an increase. So we did increase the, increase the budget. That's primarily, we put a $20,000 increase in related to potentially if what we could have to pay for driver's ed. But again, it's important to rem remember that as part of the revenue budget, which will be presented on April 4th, um, hopefully that the state aid is finalized by then, that we will be able to, you'll see a separate line for the total community programs revenue. Community programs makes up 0.18% of the total budget. Mr. Kerry, on the driver's ed component, just since you brought it up, when do you expect the RFPs back for that? We're actually supposed to have them in this week. We are there, um, do you know the exact date, Brian? I, I think it's Thursday. Okay. But um, we hope to have an award. I, I, I am hearing from colleagues that there is one company responding. Other than the one company, um, districts are moving to purchase their own vehicles and actually do their own driver's ed, dri driver's ed program. 
but there's one company right now that has been <coughs> responding to the RFPs. Okay. Just a quick question with community programs. Sure. I, at the last health and safety meeting, there was some uh, there was a discussion about utilizing the facilities, the buildings on the weekends, and yeah. You know, being somewhat disruptive sometimes throughout the school. I know we don't have staff or we don't have security mm -hmm. in place uh, for those days. I know you, you, you guys are looking to maybe con condense some of those uh, those activities into one or two buildings, but is this something that we could provide additional budget inside of this this line item to, incre to, to staff the buildings properly to support the programs? If we were to add additional staffing, that would come under the, the uh, staff salaries category such as um, guards but right now this budget presented to date is rolling over what we currently have for 22 23 we have not explored additional models that would allow for academic school day coverage meaning when schools in session monday through friday to roll that over into a weekend schedule or even into an evening schedule that is definitely something that can be quantified but it is but that is not something that i have done to date Any other questions on community programs? Health, s health services. This, this area pertains to school physician and the um, school nursing services. Services from 22 23 remain the same. Health services for parentally placed students comes out of this budget area. Um, athletic and annual physicals for students. We, we also went out for um, a physician's RF, RF because we are continually to struggle for our provider that we awarded to they're having a hard time finding staff able to provide those physicals so we do anticipate an increase in this category also which was offset by other by other reductions in it for um, for student physicals but again it's becoming a challenge when the providers cannot find staff in order to provide physicals bless you um, parents should really strongly consider when they're able to really take care of their physical because they could get to the point where if we don't have a provider, that is not by district's choice. We are aggressively seeking. We probably sent it out to, I think, 12 or 13 agencies and advertised it to try to get interest, but they just don't have people to send to us to do those physicals. How, how many times a year are we offering that? I believe we were offering it this year was three. We were considering going down to two. Do we know the percentage of our student body that takes part in that? I know I don't. I'm just curious. I don't think Mark no. does either. I'm sorry. The uh, student body that participates in physicals, percentage? About. I could get okay. that info for you. Yeah. I could definitely get that. I can get that information. No, I could definitely do that. Um, reduction in equipment budgets related to one-time equipment purchases. Last year's budget contained new uh, funding for new audiometers, which we took out of this year's budget, and it also covers uh, supplies and materials. Health services accounts for 0.15 percent of the total budget. Another quick one. Sure. For either you or Mark, um, I heard that we we had some struggles finding athletic trainers. Is that mm -hmm. oh, is that still an issue? We currently continue to fill in with 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 subs when we um, uh, when we don't have an active one. But again, it's the company that we were going to, Orlin and Cohen, that was struggling to find people in order to send it. But right now, I do believe we have Marcus patched it together. Are we locked into Orlin and Cohen the, or as a the, provider or for this school for year? This, yeah. For this school year, yeah. we are. Um, as you know, we had Mr. Lee, who was a district employee. He took a step back. He's got a young child. Um, so we have Orlin and Cohen, as uh, Glenn said. They're, they have a shortage. We have the trainer we have here. Um, she used to work with us when we were split with Jason. She's on with Orlin and Cohen. She's here three to four days a week because she can't be here every day. So we don't have a trainer every day. We definitely have them when, for instance, tomorrow we have like four contests. She'll be here for those. Uh, she was here yesterday. She was not able to be here today. She'll be here Saturday. So it's kind of patchwork as, as right now. And it's a shortage everywhere. Some districts I heard don't even have trainers right now. So it's hard to, uh, it's hard to land them. And we're hoping next year we can, you know. What, what are the options outside of that title, athletic trainer? Is, it, is there any other medical staff that we can have on, on staff? I don't know the, the answer to that. 
The only other thing that I have heard districts are going to, they're actually hiring a full-time a full-time person. It, it's a part-time function. Okay. It's, 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 it's not a full-time function, but if you were to make it a full-time function and tie it into something else within the school district's program, like as Mark pointed out, when, when Mr. Lee did it, he's also a health teacher. Right. So if you wanted to bring on, I'm not suggesting, I'm just saying what, what I do know that I've seen other districts doing to solve the problem, bring on an extra person that has those credentials and now they're entitled to benefits, it's a full-time job. So we'd be poaching from what the shortage is, we'd be, taking a full, we'd be making a full-time position, but having part of that person's responsibility as part of their full-time job assignment be the athletic trainer. So maybe, I'm just picking out numbers. I don't know how the hours roll, but it's a .5 health teacher and a .5 athletic trainer. I don't know how it would break. Yeah. But I'm just saying that it's full-time employment as opposed to a part-time mm -hmm. hourly, which is what tr traditionally athletic trainers are. But it ties right back to the same problem with physicals. There's a shortage of qualified licensed professionals no, that I provide that. this I, work. I didn't say there's a shortage. I'm just trying to get outside the box. No, no. So then we just gets hurt or if, you know, if we're, I don't want to say we're neglecting some other um, solution. It's, it's, yeah, hindsight's 20, 20 when, when a kid gets injured and we don't have someone here. The <laughs> option is definitely to hire a full-time position that part of their responsibility would be instructional school day and then part of it is an assignment to be an athletic trainer. How you exactly yeah. create that position, I've never actually researched it. I don't know that. Would, that would prevent us from having this hiccup potentially every year, right? I mean, now that Mr. Lee is no longer interested, yeah. we, we, this could be a continuing issue. Yeah, and I don't know what the future holds as far as, you know, people, uh, trainers available. Sure. Yeah. The last budget category, pers personnel, again, this category does not cover salaries. It's just what are the expenses related to running um, the human resource office in the context of what services supports the personnel office. Recruitment, training, and the evaluation of staff provides funding for the online application system, also known as OLAS. Um, advertising, it provides substitute teacher service called ASOP and it provides for the Affordable Care Act consultant to continue to keep us com compliant in that area. Um, the, increase, the increases that you see here is related to BOCES shared services that have the cost for their services have increased for the 23-24 school year. And the OLA system and the ASAP system both come directly through BOCES. Any questions on any of the categories that, that we discussed to date? Looking at the summary, as I mentioned earlier, 2.16% increase. The tax levy is a little less than 1.61% or $908,154. State aid, again, the number that we're, still sh that we're still presenting is from the executive budget. We hope to have final state aid numbers with an adopted budget on or about April 1st. Um, I haven't heard that it's going that it's going to be delayed, so I'm very very hopeful that it's that we get it either Friday or Monday. Um, other local revenue has a, a slight decrease. The decrease is primarily related to outside tuition, day school tuition. We will be going through other local revenue, state aid, and the tax levy in greater detail at the April 4th meeting. <coughs> Um, and as for use of reserves and fund balance, a slight decrease in appropriated fund balance. We are not using any of the prior year state aid funds. We are not, um, we, we, we are using the employee retirement system reserve, the same amount as we used the previous year, $1 million. We are not applying any of the teachers retirement system reserves, so there is a reduction in reserve use of $500,000. Unemployment reserve, reduction th by $376,000. Important to note, the unemployment reserve use relates and ties back to what do you what is your budget for unemployment expenses? The previous year's budget, we anticipated layoffs related to letting go and eliminating positions specifically related to COVID. So this year, we don't have we don't anticipate reductions in staffing. So we are back to our traditional hundred and four thousand dollars that we have budgeted. So we were able to reduce 
the use of that um, uh, reserve. And workers' compensation, applying $550,000. Any questions on the budget summary total? The next budget meeting, as I uh, mentioned, is April 4th, the revenue budget, and April 18th is the budget adoption. Um, as for budget presentations to the community after the Board of Education adopts the uh, budget, April 26th, meeting at for Shoreham Civic Association, April 27th, April 27th, Wading River Civic Association, May 2nd, budget hearing for the Board of Education meeting, and on May 8th, PTA Council meeting, and the um, uh, vote is May 16th, 2023, right here in the high school main gym, and all previous budget presentations and budget information can be found on the district website. Any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Curie. Thanks. Next up, we have our votes and resolutions. Um, can I get a motion? And uh, actually, um, Mrs. Maloney, can you just clarify with the rest of the board? You had um, sought out additional clarification on just exactly when we need to vote on the minutes. And if anyone is not present, um, that they need to abstain. So Correct. I just wanted to let everyone know. Um, yes, if you do not attend a meeting, you, can, you would abstain from voting, taking a motion um, for that specific meeting's minutes. So, for, so that would, for this um, block, it would be the first. Um, we'll just have you, Jim, um, abstain. Yep. Okay, so can I get a motion to approve March 14th, 2023, regular public session min minutes? Tom, second Henry. Um, any question or discussion? All in favor? Five abstained? One, zero. Okay, approval of the CPSC CSC 504 meeting summary memo. Can I get a motion? Tom, Henry, any discussion or questions? All in favor? Six, zero. Uh, approval of February 23 treasurer's report. Can I get a motion? Tom, second Megan, any discussion or questions? All in favor? Six, zero. For our curriculum and instruction resolutions, um, we have several. Is it okay to take these as a block? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, um, 271 through 280. Can I get a motion? Jim, second Henry, any discussion or questions? All in favor? Six, zero. Can I get a motion to approve 281 HR resolution? Mike, second Jim, any discussion or questions? All in favor, six, zero. For our business and operations resolution, we also have several. Is it okay to take these as a block? Okay, can I get a motion to grab, get to the end here? Um, to approve 281 through 298. Sure. Two, Tom? 282. 282 through two. Sorry, thank you. 282 through 298. I have Tom, second, Megan. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? 6 0. Can I get a motion to approve tonight's personnel agenda? Tom, second, Megan. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? 6 0. We have one communication from Ms. Oma, from Ms. Mahoney. Thank you. I just wanted to announce uh, the UPK lottery will take place on April 4th at 12 o'clock p.m. and it will be live streamed. Um, the deadline for the UPK application to be submitted is this Friday, March 31st. All information regarding the UPK lottery and each program can be found on the UPK webpage and most questions can be answered by checking the frequently asked questions tab. Also, families to just keep in mind that in order to qualify, your child must be of age and you must submit valid proof of residency by the time the application form closes. Um, and at that time, the assigned lottery numbers will be sent out shortly thereafter. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? No. Do we have any additional comments from residents? No. Okay. Can I get a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Tom? Second, Jim. All in favor? Six, zero. Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone.